Ah! Oh no! Oh hell no! We he cannot do that. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to actually be installing coilovers on Zoe. So if you don't know already, this car is still on mostly a stock suspension. And what I mean by stock is that it's got some Swift Spec R lowering springs. And besides that, we're still on stock shocks, stock sway bars, stock everything else. The reason why this car still has mostly stock parts is actually because it is full of sole function chassis bracing. It stiffens up the chassis of the car a whole lot, more than you would expect. And um, honestly, that's gotten me by. But instead of doing some super nice coilovers like you'd probably be expecting, <laughs> We got something a little bit different. Now, I'm not saying these aren't nice coilovers, but I will say that they're probably not <laughs> what most people were expecting. So we actually have some max speeding rods coilovers. Now, if you aren't aware about these, these are literally the cheapest coilovers you can find on the internet, to my knowledge. We're gonna be installing them on my track dedicated car. So... Let's get into it. I have been actually waiting quite a while for the chance to open these. I'm looking forward to it quite a bit. I've seen pictures of them and they don't look bad, but they are cheap. So I'm very interested. Max Speeding Rods is focused on performance over decades with more than 3 million customers all over the world. We house over 100 pieces of equipment in our 100,000 square foot manufacturing facility. Facebook has more than 250,000 fans. And they do, they sell a lot of stuff as far as crankshafts, aftermarket turbos, shocks, rods, of course in the name, max speeding rods, ah! and uh, of course coilovers. So these are, to my knowledge, the cheapest coilovers that you can get on the internet. Does that mean they're bad? I don't know. I'm not gonna say whether or not they're bad. I'm just going to install them because I think that it would make entertaining content to take the car to autocross actually on these coilovers. So that's what you guys will be seeing next after this video. All right, all right. So we got some, some springs. We got some crooked stickers. The welds aren't awful. I guess the stickers are supposed to be crooked. One is more crooked than the other. These go in the rear? No way. What the fuck? And they don't come with instructions, of course. So, I mean, I'll be figuring this out. Very interesting. I just hope that I'm able to get through this entire install without any hiccups. First thing we're gonna do is just take the wheels off of the car. And also, by the way, if you haven't seen last video, we actually installed some new brakes on the car from R1 Concepts. We got some performance pads and some pretty nice drilled and slotted rotors. <laughs> Nice ass lug nuts. I love these things so far. All right, so before I go too crazy with this, I need to figure out how the fuck that spring that they sent is gonna go in place of that spring in the back. Cause that makes no goddamn sense. All right, so we got this cotter pin I'm gonna need to take out. So straighten that out some, and we're gonna need to basically disconnect the upper ball joint. And at that point, these separate and the strut comes down. It's honestly that easy. And there we go. So that's out. The only thing that sucks about this too is that the brake line is going to be in the way. We'll go ahead and loosen the top of the strut and see if we can get it to come down. Damn, I'm probably gonna need to remove the caliper um, just to get it out of the way. Those are out, move this out the way. Well, since this is coming off, might as well just go ahead and set that right there too. So disconnect this, and now we just got this bottom bolt. <clears throat> cool, I love when shit's set tight. Nothing like a little bit of motivation from an impact. <clears throat> just gotta twist it. <clears throat> there we go. Now we got it. I've got the coilovers set up at the height that they were sent in the box. So all I did was really just tighten up the collars and make sure that nothing was loose. So let's go ahead and stick on one of the front ones and um, 
We'll see how well this goes. And with these being so much shorter, it should be easier to install as well. Go. Oh my. Well, oh, that didn't even want to go up. Sick. Because it's, it's connected to the sway bar. All right. So I guess we're doing this side. All you gotta do is just twist the strut slightly and it comes right out. All right, here we go. That's another one out the way. So I'm going to go ahead and put this bolt in from the bottom just cause I know that's a tricky one. Oh, this was a mistake. I definitely should have just done the top first. Come on, go. Oh, it's so close, come on. There we go. All right. Damn, Zoe's getting a set of coilovers. Whoa, dude. Right on through to the other side. Right on through to the other side, yeah. All right, now we need to adjust this thing because it's a little bit too high. I actually need this to be a little bit lower so that way I can hook the ABS lines onto it. Well, there's definitely no way I can take this off and just flip it upside down. Fuck, dude. Fuck, babe, fuck, yeah. Woo Ball joint. This one. No, <clears throat> the caliper. Oh, 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 that was almost bad. And we're done. That is one corner completely installed with new max speeding rod coilovers. The strut is actually starting to turn on me. I need it to stay tight, but it's not staying tight. Quit it. Not cut that shit out, boy. Get this tight. So we'll get that bolt on and we'll give it a few bumps. Get it. Make sure it's tight. Uh is done, I believe. So the top is tight, ball joint, got that bottom one, ABS lines are out the way, calipers back on. The fronts are done, fuck yeah. Getting ready to put on the rears, and I was just kind of curious um, how much the adjustment in these actually makes a difference. So here we go, I have them at zero, as soft as they go, and I'm gonna push it down as fast as I can. Ready? And it's done, that was, way fast so let's turn it all the way up now surprisingly it makes quite a difference <sighs> same amount of force that was as fast as i could push them down i'll do it again <sighs> yep so we're gonna disconnect the strut first and we'll just pull that out then on top of that there is also a side right here so the nuts off and get this out Drop the bucket. Come on, get down. Mm. So I should be able to just pull it out. What bam Boom, stock strut is out. So now let's go ahead and get these springs. It should be as easy as pushing down and being like one, two, three. All right, so now the fun part. I gotta figure out how to put springs back into this. There's no way this goes around that. Uh-uh. What the fuck? What do they expect me to do? Because there's no way that this just goes up in there. Um, excuse me? So there's like a section that this will lock into. Dude, that is so sketch. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, it's not gonna, it's not gonna go anywhere. Maybe there's just some way that these are true coilover rears and I just don't know about it, but I really just don't know about it. All right, so let's lower these a lot and let's stick these going with the bottom, I believe. I don't, I don't know. Need a hammer. Where's my dead blow? Cool, got that through. Now we can put a nut on the back side of it and we'll be good. And the springs are held in place. So should be able to put the shock in, should. 
Keep that in mind. Should. Oh my God. No, -uh. these got to get longer. There's no way. Oh, these got to get way longer. So I'm just discovering something really interesting. It's the fact that to bolt to the strut, all I have is this bolt because on the factory struts, there's a nut that's actually welded to the backside of the strut. So now I don't have a way to bolt down the strut to the spindle. Therefore, I don't I don't have everything I need to install these coilovers. I'm not tripping, am I? <laughs> Maybe I am tripping. Yeah, so for the back, as you see, there's a nut right here. So you stick it through and just screw it in. God, son of a well, it's about an hour later. Uh, we got some more hardware to fix our missing hardware issue. Hopefully that works at least. And uh, the church next door is playing music. So you guys get to listen to that. So here's the bolt. I don't remember which of these were nuts for this specific bolt. I bought hardware to try and reuse the bolt. And I also bought hardware, hardware to replace the bolt. So I'm gonna try and just I'll slap this all back together. Hopefully this is the same size nut as what I'm needing. If you can see, I gotta figure out how to get this to hook up to this. Yeah, oh, yeah. like four inches of gap. The shock is extended out as far as it goes almost. So we gotta pick this up. So stick the jack under the bucket and it's picking up the car. Cool. So I need to lower that spring some more because there's no way that I'm gonna get this to meet up with the shock. So I'm probably gonna end up just setting this at its lowest setting to start with because I don't know what else to do. Get off of there. We'll bring it up. That's like half an inch. Half an inch from its lowest setting. That should be reasonable, right? Oh my God, dude, this fucking music. They're going in. Yep, they're getting after it. Bro, these fucking things never line up for shit. God. And it's picking up the car again. I have the springs pretty much set to the lowest height possible. And I still cannot get this shit to hook up. I am impressed. That's really all the threads that were on there. Wow. That is the lowest setting that they can go. How do I, how do I hook that up? All right, I'm just going to set the rears to the lowest possible height. Maybe I'll be able to hook them up at that point. So, yep, we're doing it. We're just going as low as possible. Don't pick the car up, please. It's picking the car up. God damn. Okay, guys, it is about two weeks later. Um, I haven't touched the Z in quite a while waiting for parts. So this was a solution that the rep over at Max Speeding Rods actually gave me. They just sent me basically a whole nother tube. So I got to swap all of the parts here and here over to this one. They said it's about three or four inches longer. Um, so it should go in place after that with no problems. Hopefully it works. And yeah, that's pretty much what we're picking up. So let's go ahead and get back into it. Here we go. First thing we got to do is literally just take these things apart. So let's see if I can speed this up. That didn't work. Go over to this one. So these shocks from what it looks like are actually like five inches longer. And it looks like they actually have a little bit more travel too. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. About right there. That looks pretty decent. Now we gotta do the top part. Last one. Boom, boom, boom. And we have to take off this and the bump stop. And there's an O-ring in here. It's not an O-ring. Get off of there, come on. There we go. Wow, these are way smaller. Damn, dude. Bottom. Then this, then this. Tighten these back down. Now that's on. Now I can tighten this since those are tight. All right, there we go. That is our uh, new shock assembly. I now have extended shocks. We'll start with this length and um, we'll go from there. We will adjust them if we need to. So now let's go ahead and build the second one. Pull that off. Boom, 
Slap it on this one. Now we can put this on top, get that one down, put this down, and line up those holes. So tighten this back down, and let's stick the nut on. Now we can, fuck, I forgot to put this on. God damn it, roast me, roast me in the comments below. All right, and it's cool because I can actually, I can, I didn't even think about that before, but I can straight up just pull all this off. Well, you learn something every day, every day. Make sure you guys learn something every day. Good life lesson, learn something every day. You wanna be smart when you grow up? Learn something every day. Cause that's a lot of days to learn. Yeah, so all those Allens didn't even have to come off. I'm just, I'm stupid. If I ever decide that I wanna put a long travel suspension on this Z, which I have considered doing plenty of times, now I know how to do it. So now we got these, go ahead and adjust them. And now we should be good to install them. Ooh, well, we'll go ahead and stick this bolt through. Wow, we got coilovers on the car now. So now we just put nuts on everything and we are good to go. Ooh, this is progress, boy. Now this side, let's do it. The bucket in and then put the spring in. There we go. There we go. Looks like that's pretty straight. There we go. Everybody's cringing right now as I'm doing that. I already know. Stick this shock up in place. There we go. There we go. Now all that's left is to put the wheels on, put it on the ground and see how the height of the car is. I have a feeling it's probably gonna be Way too low. Start with this corner, get them all hand tight, then move on from there. Here we go. Moment of truth. Zoe's first ever set of coilovers. Ooh. Wow, that is low. Damn. That is so much lower in the front. The rear is about the same height that it was before. The rear actually might be a little bit taller than it was before. Fuck, that means I gotta adjust it. Oh my God, the front is so low though. Dude, I can't even fit my fingers in there. Oh fuck, that's so much lower than I wanted it to be. Can you guys hear this? Oh my God, dude. The car just feels so bouncy and all I did was just sit in it. Something's rubbing. It's rubbing something for sure. Absolutely rubbing something. Ah! Oh no! Oh hell no! We, we cannot do that. It's literally just tire on fender contact right there. All right, well, back in the shop it goes. At least it looks good. <sighs> well, fuck. Y'all saw how to adjust them already before, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pick it up, get it back down, and I'll show you what it looks like after. Dag nabbit, I'm stuck like I'm on a one-on-one -on -one in bad traffic. Feel like I'm only good at rapping by my bad habits. I took five days off and got back at it. Yeah, I'm back at it. Look, mama, I'm doing it. Trying to swallow my pride without chewing it. And that's a bad idea. Much better. Don't do it. And it's not bottoming out anymore. Hell yeah. All right, so now we've got all four corners adjusted. I actually ended up getting the front back in the air and the rear back in the air. I raised the front probably about an inch, inch and a half. I lowered the rear probably about half an inch just to get them at least somewhat closer to where it's a little bit more reasonable to drive. So it's not exactly where I want it, but it should be close enough to where we can tell how they're gonna ride. So like, I mean, I can literally get here with one hand and the whole car just bounces up and down. Like it's extremely easy to move up and down. I don't really think the shocks are really doing that much to keep it from bouncing. Um, and I have no idea what the spring rate is. So give me just a second, we'll stick a GoPro on and we'll head out. Wow. Okay, I accidentally let the clutch out a little bit. And the first thing I noticed is that when I let the clutch out, the whole car just, the rear end squatted super hard and the front lifted up super high. 
Oh man, this feels interesting. The whole car is literally just swaying. It's just swaying left and right now. I need to make sure my lug nuts are tight. This feels weird. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that real quick. Make sure everything's still tight, because this doesn't, this doesn't feel right. I don't know if that's just how these ride, or if I forgot to tighten something, because this feels real loose. All the lug nuts are tight here. These are all tight. I'm gonna just tighten these all the way. Let's see if it gets any better. It's weird because the car feels snappy, but it doesn't feel stiff. On the previous springs that I had on the car, they were swift lowering springs. They lowered the car about an inch and they handled pretty well. They handled really well. I really enjoyed how the car felt previously. This is just, this is weird. <laughs> that? Uh, that was the chassis brace under the car. Uh, I hit the road. That hurt me so bad. <laughs> yeah, I honestly think I would have to take this car to autocross to see how it handles. Probably gonna do a pull right here. Shit. I don't, I don't see any houses. All right, let's see how this feels. the money well it depends it really just depends on why you're buying the coilovers to start with if you're getting the coilovers to lower your car and have complete customization over the ride height then yes they are worth it because you do have the adjustability that you're looking for and you can get the car pretty low if you're lowering your car these work great fucking perfect honestly if you are looking for a performance upgrade and you're trying to buy coilovers for the sake of improving the handling of your car i'll keep them on for a little bit we'll probably go to an autocross or two maybe go on some nice roads we'll just keep them on and if you guys want to tag along and see how i like the coilovers then subscribe to the channel leave a like on this video also if it was helpful to you on whether or not you should buy these coilovers and uh we'll just uh we'll run them for a little bit and we'll see how i like them so anyways that's it for now Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.